Sweet home, Santa Barbara, where the skies are so blue. Sweet home, Santa Barbara, what's worked for me can work for you. Welcome back, friends, to Sweet Home Santa Barbara. I'm your co-host, Jonathan Robinson. I'm with my co-host, friend, and realtor. Scott Williams. And Scott, I'm excited that we're going to have a guest today, Joe Pike, who I will introduce in a moment. And Joe knows a lot about uh, European rental and and real estate markets, especially Portugal. Let me uh, introduce Joe. He's actually from the UK. Uh, He's always had a keen interest in the property market and bought his first property when he was just 21 years old. And over the next 15 years, he went on to buy 16 more in three European countries and has spent many years following world property markets. He's in the UK rental business, which is still operational today, and he currently lives in Portugal, having spent many years studying real estate and has a good understanding of the market in Portugal. And that's what we want to talk to you about, Joe. uh, Welcome to Sweet Home Santa Barbara. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Yeah. You know, um, I'm interested in knowing what it's like doing business in a foreign country such as Portugal. Every country is different. So what's it like uh, doing the the real estate and rental business in condo uh, or in, in Portugal? Uh, well, it's it's quite simple in Portugal. Uh, Portugal is a very small country. There's only 10 million people there in total. Um, and the property market is is very straightforward. It works similar, I would say, to the US, but not, not quite the same. You know, there's certain different things that happen. Um, and that breaks down into, um, if you want to buy a property in Portugal, the first thing and the first stage is what we call as a permissory contract. Now, I don't know whether you have this in the US or not, this is where you found a property, you want to move forward with it. You come up with a prom- promissory note, a promise to buy the property. At this point, you would be expected to put a 10% down. That is then non-refundable. At this point, mm-hmm. you are legally bound to buy that property. And this is kind of an extra stage, which I don't know whether it exists in the US or not. After that, the next stage is you exchange money and you take ownership of the property. I've heard that, you know, like, Sometimes when doing property stuff in Mexico, there's all kinds of Mexican laws and bureaucracies that exist in Portugal. Or are they like eager for buyers? No, they're eager for buyers. And it's it, like I say, it's a very simple process. You know, it's a case of just provide the documentation, which again is simple and standard. Um, and it's one of the easiest buying processes in Europe. Hmm. But, well, Joe, you, you mentioned that the people put 10% down as like a deposit and that when you reach that stage in a negotiation that you potentially, uh, you, you have to move forward with that. Uh, prior to this point where your money, you know, could be lost, um, is there a process where you like examine the property or do inspections or that, does that take place before that happens? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. All of that happens beforehand. You need, you would have to, your lawyers or whoever's representing you would have to have full eyes on the documentation against that property. And they would have to do all the due diligence because everything in that contract that you're signing when your 10% goes over would always lead towards the final contract. So, you know, if there was, say, I don't know, some painting or something that needed to be replaced or maybe the boiler was broken and part of the contract is when I take ownership of this property, those things are going to be changed. They would be put into your promissory contract. So when your 10% goes down, those things would be done. And then you wouldn't move forward to complete on the property until those things had taken place. Okay. that's down, That sounds like there's a, a protection for the buyer and there's a process of checking out the property and making sure it's a good property legally and physically. That, that we would expect that, that that would be very similar to the United States in that regard. Excellent. Yeah. You know, you um, mentioned in the bio that you've done, uh, you know, property in three European countries. And is there a lot of similarity between all of Europe, or is each country like very different? Each country is very different. Um, you know, I would say the most tricky country I've bought in is Italy. 
There's a lot of uh, red tape there um, and it's very difficult to buy there. I perhaps wouldn't buy any other properties in Italy. The only reason I bought there is my family are from there. I've also mm -hmm. bought in Germany and Portugal and the UK. Mm -hmm. And Portugal seems to be your favorite probably. Yeah, I've made more money in Portugal than I have anywhere else. Uh -huh. So for me, it's a solid investment and, and that's the, the market that I'm looking at right now. Uh -huh. Where, where, do you, where do you live in Portugal, Joe? I live in Amundsil, which is just outside Vila Moura. Um, it's part of what we call the Golden Triangle. <laughs> why, why is it called that? That's where all the money is. <laughs> <laughs> nice term. So is this coastal? It is, yeah. It's, um, you know, I live about maybe five minutes away from the beach. All right. I'm curious, uh, now you're getting me interested in living, moving to Portugal, uh, uh, Joe. Um, oh, yeah. So what, what's a, I don't know, a, a two-bedroom condo cost five minutes from the beach in Portugal? I would say anywhere from about 350000 up to about 600000 Uh-huh. Same as in Santa Barbara, not. <laughs> yeah. Not. There's the big difference, right? Yes, yes. Well, we get people in Santa Barbara that want to spend six hundred or six hundred fifty thousand, and you get a one bedroom, five hundred square foot condominium that you could probably rent out for about three thousand dollars a month, and that's what six hundred thousand dollars gets you here. What what happens with your six hundred thousand in Portugal? Give give us some sort of idea what that might be. We'll start well, start say, at that price. I would say in the summertime, we're not looking at three three thousand a month. We're looking at that a week. Oh, so wow. 3,000 3, a week over the summer months, which we, we call 10 weeks. So that's when all the tourists come in. So you're making um, some serious money. And if you're looking at about uh, like around the Algarve, which is the southern part of Portugal, where all the beaches are, there's also around about 20 golf courses. So there's two shoulder seasons. Okay. So the rental market uh, can be very, very lucrative. Very, very. And that's, I think, reflects in the prices. And I know, like you say, compared to Santa Barbara, they're still relatively cheap. But for Europeans, they, they, they are still quite expensive. Mm -hmm. And okay. who takes care of all the work involved in renting it out? You have a company that does that? Well, depending, depending on where you buy, some of the times you're buying into um, a development that already has a management and rental company in place. Mm -hmm. But if not, we at Birch Hathaway Portugal Property, we would we would provide that for you. So we have a rental and management side to our company. Okay. Well, if you bought a place in Portugal, you know, hundred percent ownership of this, this condominium we're talking about at this point. Um, do you uh, say, say you had three or four friends that wanted to share that with you, or there's other people in Europe that wanted to share it. Is there any kind of shared uh, ownership or is, is it just always a hundred percent? How do you do it there? Yeah, it's always 100%. We do very, there is shared ownership, but it, it doesn't happen very often. Okay. All right. Well, that, that's just, just good to, to know. Now, in a condominium in Santa Barbara, they wouldn't necessarily let you rent the property out by the week. So that sounds like something you can't do. But obviously, you're saying that you can do that. T talk to us a little bit about what that, what that boils down to. Well, that's actually the norm for uh, Portugal, especially in the south i mean even the cities you're still allowed to do short-term rentals and um, a lot of europeans so travel within europe is very very inexpensive so you get a lot of people that would travel to portugal just for the weekend and um, therefore they'd only need a, a short-term rental so that seems to be the and is the biggest the biggest rental market well using this as an example just uh, can you get a mortgage on something like this or is this a, a, a cash purchase? No, no, absolutely. You can get a mortgage. Um, what I would say is for an American buying in, in Portugal, you would have to put down about 30%, maybe 35. Um, but you're looking at mortgage rates of about 3.5% fixed. Wow. <laughs> okay. Now I, or some of our listeners have jobs or income streams here in, in California or in the United States. And so uh, do you approach a, a bank of some sort in Portugal and say, look, I, I make $300,000 a year or, you know, whatever the, our incomes are, 
do you then get a mortgage based upon the fact that I have an income in California or exactly how does that work? That. Yeah, exactly that. They would take in your earnings in the country where you are from and they would base it as a multiple of your earnings, basically. Okay. And do does they take help? into the account that the property also earns income? Does that help the, or they that don't care? Into it. They, don't, they, don't, they don't take that into it. It's a case of it's always based on what you're earning as opposed to what you could earn. All right. Okay. Do they take into account things like uh, your assets, like if you own a house free and clear, or, or is it all your uh, employment earnings? It's all your employment earnings. They don't take into account anything you're earning off other properties. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering uh, for people who might be interested in moving to Portugal because it's cheaper and they can live five minutes from the beach for uh, for less than Santa Barbara. Uh, what are, what's it like there? Do uh, many people speak English? Are the people friendly? What, what can you say about that? Everybody speaks English. Everybody. Mm -hmm. It's like there isn't a single place you can go into in the Algarve where they don't speak English. Mm. You know, it's quite incredible. I even go in and try and speak Portuguese to them, and they <laughs> always respond to me in English. Um, it's a great place to live. It uh -huh. really is. And when we're talking about things being cheap, I mean, you can go and have a like what we call prata de dia, like dish of the day, and you spend maybe seven fifty, eight euros. You get three courses plus a glass of wine and a coffee at the end. Wow. Okay. okay. Goodbye, California. Yeah, well, that was, we're seeing so many buyers now from California. There's a huge influx into into Portugal. Thirty five percent of our buyers last year were were American, and the biggest areas that are buying is California and New York. Mm -hmm. So, what what does a you know we can we can leave this condo or keep it in our discussion here. What sort of things, what, what do Americans buy and uh, what are people looking for? What, what's, what's your market? You know, talk a little about the market, just general, generally. Okay. So there's always a wide swing. So our average buyer is now 44 years old, even though Portugal is the number one place to retire to in the world. There's a wide variety of what people are looking for. Some people are looking for the two bedroom condominium, lock up and leave. Other people are looking for a bigger property, maybe four or five bedrooms, modern, newly built, um, with a little bit of um, a garden space. And it all depends on how long they're thinking of spending in the country. You know, mm -hmm. Some people come for two, three weeks a year. Other people want to be there for four to five months. So it, there really is a big, like a wide variety of what people are looking for. Fortunately, we provide all of it. <laughs> so we're, we're selling everything from you. Your one bedroom studio apartment to um, a huge five six bedroom villa. Mm -hmm. Well, it's Santa Barbara has those five six bedroom villas. Montecito, Hope Ranch are are fine areas here. Let's talk a little bit about that market. Um, what do the people? You know, they're there for five or six months of the year. Then that leaves half of year when the property that they're not occupying it. What can you do with a property like that? And what kind of sort of price ranges are we talking about? Uh, well, these these villas go up from a million probably to, well, right up to 30 million, depending on where you're looking to buy. Um, if they sat empty for those six months, you would need a management company to take care of the gardens, to make sure the properties aired out properly. You know, and that, again, you know, is not expensive. Do those properties also get uh, rented out? Uh, depending on the depending on the buyer, some people don't want to have other people in their properties. Other people will rent them out, as I say, normally for a, a ten to twelve week period. Um, other people put them on the rental market the entire year. But yeah, they do get rented out, and they get really good, really good money. If you had like a four or five bedroom house on a golf course, you'd be looking at maybe seven to eight thousand a week that's good i would imagine the weather uh i was just in spain the weather was perfect in you know in october november uh when's the best time of year to be in portugal there is no best time of year it's always fantastic um, but what i would say is the weather in the algarve certainly is um very similar to that of uh, california uh -huh. and i would say more san diego you know, it's, it's warm most of the year. 
So it doesn't freeze? No. Unless you're right up in the north on the Spanish border, then yeah, you, you will. it will freeze there. But other than that, no. Okay, one of the things that I've helped people a lot with over the years in terms of selling properties is help them prepare it for sale, do the sort of things that, you know, make it look really good prior to sell. Um, talk, to, talk to us a little bit about the, the buying and selling and, and fixing up. What, what's that market? What's it, what happens there? Um, well, it depends who you go with, really. But, I mean, there's plenty of tradespeople in Portugal. Um, it's kind of what they live off, you know. A lot of people, that that's what they do. And um, it, it's simple enough to find these guys. And it's, again, not very expensive. The average wage in Portugal is about €900 Euros a month. So to find these guys, you will find them, and they're cheap. And the standard of work is fantastic. Talk to us a little bit about the economics of buying and selling real estate or appreciation rates or depreciation rates. What, what's happened over the last, you know, during the time you, how long have you been there? What's, what's what period of time? I've we been, covered? I've been in uh, Portugal for six years. I've been involved in the company since it opened in 2008, um, which was obviously probably the worst time to set up any business because the market completely crashed, right? That was worldwide. What we've seen since then is property prices going up and up and up and up. And, you know, it, can it continue? I don't know. We keep saying it can't. Last year, property prices went up on a whole over, over the whole of Portugal, 18%. The year before, 12%. You know, what do I expect to see this year? I would say about 10%. All right. And um, what, what sort of things do you think are... Um important to to mention to a potential uh, buyer from america what 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 occurs to you um i would say to study the area is, is is the main thing you know what we see is a lot of americans coming in that don't know portugal it may be their first visit there so they haven't done the traveling they haven't seen the areas they, they haven't closed down on what it is that they're looking for so they'll go from porto lisbon and the algarve and while it's only a six hour drive. So it isn't particularly a huge distance to an American. Six hours is nothing. You know, to a European, two hours is a long way. Um, so it is really a case of trying to narrow people down. Um, it's either they want the city or they want the beach. And that's kind of how I try to do it. If they want the city, Lisbon or Porto. If they want the beach, then it's the Algarve. And then when you get to the Algarve, it's almost 200 kilometers of coastline. So about 150 miles, say. Um, so then within that region, you still have to try and narrow people down because otherwise it's a long day. Okay. I have some friends that were just uh, in Portugal and they said that there's a pretty bad drought and that people are worried about water. Are there any natural disasters or droughts or things that one has to be really aware of? Um, nothing really. I say the only thing that we do get occasionally is like localized fires. Um, they tend to be very small and they're dealt with within a day or so. Um, they don't really cause any major problems. They tend to be inland and they tend to be in areas where there are there's no residents. Mm -hmm. What's the taxation situation like as far as real estate goes in Portugal? Um, so taxation in a purchase, you're looking at about 7% of the purchase price. That covers all the taxes of buying your stamp duties and any other any taxes that apply. So you have you have it you have taxes to pay of seven percent of the purchase that occurs at the time that you make the purchase. Correct. Okay, that's different than the United States. Okay, so that's that's a that's a, a cost there. But say say you bought something for you know a million dollars and five years later you sell it for a million and a half. Um, what happens to the person who does something like that? So a, a capital gain is going to cost you about 28%. Okay. And that can be rolled into another property, so you don't have to pay it up front. If you sell it and you purchase another property, you won't pay the tax on it, providing that the property is more expensive. But it isn't that the tax has gone away. They're just rolling it over. So by the time you sell the next property, <laughs> the 28% is going to look a little prettier, right? Okay. All right. That's also a little different 
that, that's we had rules like that prior to 1997 here, but now. So that, that's an interesting thing. So you, you just keep keep rolling it forward. What happens when you die? Then it's, well, actually, there's no inheritance tax in Portugal. So okay. dying is, is a great benefit there. Great benefit, yeah. Yeah, so everybody get, should be doing it. You get, yeah. Well, that's why I started buying in Portugal, to be honest, because I know I said I have 16 properties. I've now got 22 properties, um, and a lot of them are in the UK. Uh, let's say I've bought one in Italy and I've bought in Portugal, the one in Germany I've sold. Um, but I wouldn't buy in the UK ever again you know, because there is an inheritance tax there. So now that I buy in Portugal, I buy and sell. So when I buy, as I said, there's around about 7% fees. If I sell, there's around about 5% fees. But the jump in um, the, the way the properties are going, especially the areas I'm buying in, I'm finding about around about 20% a year. Is, is the increase in the, in the value. Plus I'm buying things that I need to do some work to. So I'm adding value to them. And the main reason for buying in Portugal is there's no inheritance tax. So anything that I do do now, I will leave to my children. All right. Um, well, you talked a little bit about the market not being quite as brisk. You know, we, we've had a change in the market in the last uh, year uh, from a very brisk market to somewhat less. Um, how, how you you mentioned that it dropped from eighteen percent to to more like ten percent. Is that pretty much what things have happened there? Not a lot of effect. I think will happen. I don't think we can keep going up at the rate they're going up. You know, eighteen percent is a lot for property prices to rise. The oh, why, why I say ten percent is because there's you know interest rates have gone up in Europe, even though they're three point five percent now. Last year they were one point five, so a two percent swing does make a difference. Um, so I would see a slight slowdown in the market, but the big thing for Portugal is supply and demand, you know, and that's just the same in any business. It doesn't matter what you're in. We don't have the supply, but the demand is so high right now that it will keep property prices going up. So Joe, I've heard something about uh, golden visa. Like if you want to have permanent residency in Portugal, what's that about? Yeah. So the golden visa gives you, you know, what I call free access to Europe and the Schengen areas. So you can invest as little as 280000 You can park your money. You get around about 3% return on this investment. And at the end of a period of around about five to six years, you will either be able to get a permanent residency or a Portuguese passport. What that means is you can spend as little or as much time in anywhere in Europe as you see fit. So right now for an American, if they were going to Europe, they can spend, I think, a maximum of 60 days. With a golden visa and the passport, you can stay as long or as little as you want. The two hundred eighty thousand dollars just review is is held with, uh, gaining an interest, and at the end of five years, then you you pass through this this period of time, and and then the visas, then your passport's available to you, permanent residency in, in Europe. Exactly, and you and your initial investment is returned to you. So it is a case of just parking your money for that period of time. You know, there's there's different levels of golden visa. I mean, it's always the same outcome, but the entry level is 280,000. And that is because it's in a low density area. The building is over 30 years old. You know, if you want something in the center of Lisbon, you're going to have to pay 350. If you want something you physically own and is yours, you have to pay 500. But there's different options and it will all be down to the individual. But the end goal is exactly the same. You end up with a permanent residency and you, or a passport, whichever you choose. Okay, so just thinking about this, uh, the five hundred thousand dollars because you want to buy a place there. Uh, it, during the five or six year period of time that this takes, do you get to spend as much time in Portugal as you wish? Exactly. You do. Okay. So you could spend ten months of the year there. All right. So this is this is just part of the process of, of making a deeper commitment to ha having ownership and property in Europe. This is how you do it. Exactly. I mean, there, there's what we call the D7. So if an American wanted to stay um, in Portugal and they said, look, I'm going to move there, you can go in what's called the D7, which is a cheaper visa. However, the D7 visa would require you to stay there for a minimum of six months every year without fail. It's like you can't go three years in and then decide, hey, I'm not going to stay there for six months. 
you have to stay there for six months to qualify for that visa. The golden visa gives you free reign. You can stay as long or as little as you want. That's the beauty of the golden visa. Lots of good specific knowledge to know about. What were you going to say, Scott? Well, I, I think that this is this is really the um, you, you can't just dabble in wanting to go to Portugal. You you have you have to make a commitment of of funds along with your purchase of a property there. So it, it these are these are the things that our our listeners need to know. Yeah, exactly. And that's why there's people like Joe to explain it to us. <laughs> Well, I hope you've got enough information, guys. And, um, you know, thank you for having me on. I really do appreciate it. All right. Well, if uh, I think for our listeners, if they're interested in exploring uh, the property market, they should contact me, Scott at scottwilliams.com, and we'll put you in, in contact with Joe. That's the first thing I should think of for our listeners. Very informative, Joe. Uh, I wasn't interested before, but now Portugal's looking pretty good. <laughs> we appreciate you, uh, your knowledge and your uh, willingness to share. It and actually happens to everybody I speak to. They go, what, Portugal? I never thought about it before. And then by the end of it, it's like, do you have a card? <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. I can understand. So join us next time for more information and exciting explorations on Sweet Home Santa Barbara. Thank you for listening. Please subscribe to our podcast on your favorite app. If you know someone preparing to sell their home, please tell them about the podcast. Visit scottwilliams.com to contact me and download the two free e-booklets, Is My House Saleable Now? and How Not to Buy a Money Pit. Thank you for listening.